This is Eagles Post Game Live presented by Cure Auto Insurance. Final score for the season, 37-17 in favor of the Dallas Cowboys. Your Philadelphia Eagles, our Philadelphia Eagles have been eliminated from playoff contention. It is done finito right now, courtesy of the Dallas Cowboys. So here's the deal. The New York Giants had to lose. They did that. Thank you, New York Giants. The Washington football team had to lose. No, the, no way. They were going against the coach's former team. They lost in a big way. And the Eagles, piece of cake against the Dallas Cowboys team that had given up 31 points per game. Coming up, their defense, Andy Dalton, had been knocked senseless several games ago, had been playing better. But there's no way the birds couldn't take care of him. Uh, did not happen. And now the Eagles fall to 4-10-1. And, and you really don't want a four-win team in the playoffs. You, you need like a, a six-win or a seven-win team in the NFC East because that's the kind of division that is. They're the first team eliminated from playoff contention in a terrible, terrible division. And the last thing I'll say is seven times in 14 games, we'll see what happens now in the 15th, seven times in 14 games the Eagles had an opposition team member become player of the week as a result of playing the Philadelphia Eagles. Will it be 8 and 15 games? Will it be Michael Gallup? Will it be Andy Dalton? We're going to find out. Ray Dittinger's here. Barrett Brooks is here. Seth Joyner is there. He'll be with us all show as usual. We'll hear from Doug Peterson. Doug Peterson didn't run the ball, didn't seem to me. Barrett, what do you think about that? That's, that's the biggest thing. That's the biggest travesty that I'm feeling right now because I mean, I don't care how much they got up. They were up by, what, 13 points. You stop running the ball halfway through the game. That's what you can't do. You know this team is ranked 31st, I mean, 32nd against the run, and you stop running the ball. I mean, it's, it, that's idiotic. I mean, come on now. The reason you got up on this team was the fact that you were running the ball consistently. Whether you run the ball consistently or not, you still have to run it. That way you keep the game in third and manageable. We start trying to be smarter than what we are. We start throwing the ball. Come on now, Doug. It just didn't make sense. This whole game plan should have been thrown out the door. Run the ball. Run, I, I'd have ran five plays. Run left, run right, run up the middle, and then run two screen plays. Yep. That's all I'd have done. But the fact that we just go in and, and, and just – just refuse to run the ball. It's, it's, it's stupid, man. It's stupid. Yeah. Well, Ray, we, we had an inkling that that might happen because that's the way Doug calls his game plan. And, um, and, and sure enough, it did. 39 times officially, Jalen Hurts is what I have tried to pass the ball. You got nine rushing attempts by Hurts. You can add those in. I don't know how many times he was, he was sacked. I've got, I've got two, two sacks, two and a half, three sacks. So those are called passes, Ray. Mm -hmm. So um, they threw the ball or attempted to well more than they try to run it. Well, um, what this really just underscores is that uh, something that we've known all year, the Eagles just aren't a very good team. Uh, and uh, the fact that you could be the first team eliminated in one of the worst divisions in the history of football speaks to that. Um, the fact that the Cowboys were able to score on the Eagles a lot it, to me, it's not a huge surprise because the Eagles' defense is pretty short on players. You saw that today. And the Cowboys have a lot of offensive weapons. I mean, they have, they have a lot of guys that are playmakers. You get the ball in their hands, they're, they're, they could do some damage, especially if you have a team that's as depleted uh, on defense, especially when you lose Fletcher Cox, uh, that as depleted as you are, a team like the Cowboys, if they protect a guy like Andy Dalton, they're going to score some points. To me, the more troubling side of it was the Eagles' inability to do anything offensively after they got off to the 14-3 to lead. Because the, the, Dallas, the Dallas offense has been a little up and down this year, but the one thing that's been constant about them is that their defense has been lousy every week. Uh, and today you made them look a heck of a lot better than they are. And, uh, you know, it's, it's very telling to me that the Eagles had six consecutive possessions Six consecutive possessions where they got the ball into Dallas territory and they couldn't do anything with it. They couldn't score a single, right there, right? a single point. Here you go. Here's, this is six consecutive possessions in which they got the ball in Dallas territory against this awful defense and didn't score a single point. And I think it tells you a lot about who the Eagles are and how far they still have to improve to become a good team again. The, the Darius Slay interception, 
is really a chance for them to get back in the game. I mean, they had, the, the Cowboys had taken the game away. The Cowboys seemed to be moving the ball. The Cowboys knew what they were doing. And then you have that play, and it's 30 to, it's 30 to 17. Um, it's, it's still the bottom of the third quarter. So there's still time. And Darius Slay makes a really nice play to, to intercept the ball. The Eagles get the ball right there at the Dallas 28. Now here's your chance to really re regain the momentum, get some points, get back in the game. And what do they do? Holding penalty and a false start. And, you know, next thing you know, it's fourth, it's fourth and 15, and then Doug makes the decision, I'm not going to try a field goal. I'm going to go for it on fourth and 15. Ertz gets stopped, and that's it. But, I mean, that really kind of tells you, here's the big moment. You get the takeaway you need. You're in great field position. You're right there ready to score points and get back in the game. And you get back-to-back -back penalties, a holding penalty on prior, false start on Ertz. Now, all of a sudden, it's third and 18, and you're up against it. And then... All the other possessions after that, you get the ball down into Dallas territory and you can't do a thing with it. So in, in, every, in every respect, you look at this and it just kind of takes you back to the one basic fundamental truth is that this is not a very good team. And, uh, and you saw that today. And there, maybe, there's some, maybe there's a silver lining here that if the Eagles had somehow gotten into the playoffs and gotten a playoff game, you know, would there have been a sense that, you know, hey, we're not that far off. You know, we're really not that bad. We got in the playoffs. This is four years in a row, yada, yada, yada. You know, now maybe confronted with the fact that these other three tomato cans in this division are still playing with a chance to get in the playoffs, <laughs> the Giants, Washington, and Dallas. They're, they're still playing for the playoffs. You're already out. Maybe, the, maybe this is the sobering reality that, you know what, we are that bad. Yeah, you know, and and we got to start. We got to start doing things different and bringing in different people and changing our way of business. Or else, guess what? We're going to be looking up at the rest of this division for the foreseeable future. Yeah, certainly that's what's happening this season. Seth Joyner, uh, by my unofficial calculation, I've got 51 pass attempts by the Eagles, including the sacks uh, by Hertz and including the Hertz runs, and I've got 20 runs. 51 pass, 20 runs, and we talked especially uh, you and Barrett, about run, run, run. Certainly Doug will run. This run defense is terrible. The Cowboys, that's not what happened. But, you know, Doug's got a new toy in Jalen Hurts. Pass, 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 pass. And it just it didn't work out. Your view on this, Seth? Hey, listen, he just he can't help himself. I said it in pregame that, you know, you expect for him to run the football. He's just not going to live by that because that's not his DNA. That's not what he wants to do from an offensive perspective. Um, you know, they started off great with the first two two possessions, and then from that point, they just went helter-skelter. They could get nothing going, and then the, and then the defense falls apart. You know, I, I, to, to be honest with you, you know, the first half of this game is more about, you know, Doug's inefficiency to try to figure out, you know, what to do from an offensive perspective. It, you know, I'm still perplexed because every single play, it seems like we're up against the clock. You, you know what that tells me? That tells me that there's no offensive coordination in your play calling and you're calling random plays and the clock is running down because of indecisiveness. You haven't call you haven't in your mind figured out how you want to coordinate your plays and what you should call next so that your quarterback can call a play get to the line of scrimmage you know read the defense make a check and then play the play um, that's the first part the second part is okay this is the third time this year that the eagles defense has given up over 500 yards and listen you know they are so decimated they got you got when you lose fletcher cox you lose a big piece of your defense, but you're basically out there playing with, what, three guys that are basically starters? You know, the rest of the guys are practice squad guys and backups, and those you're a practice squad or backup player for a reason. You know, Jim Schwartz waited until the third quarter to pull Michael Jaquette out of the game and put Jalen Mills over there. The game was already over, okay? That move should have been made at halftime. You make that move then, but it always seems like the Eagles are so far behind in their decision-making process of what to do and how to do it and how to adjust because they can't make adjustments on the fly. They can't make adjustments on the move. And listen, I agree with Ray wholeheartedly, okay? This is what needed to happen to this team because if they do get in the playoffs, like Ray said, and they have this false sense that, you know what, hey, we're maybe not that bad. Yes, you are. You're, you're, <laughs> listen, they were, always, all, all, they, they, they were already deficient, 
you know, as a football team when they were with full strength because there was no continuity and no rhythm to the offense and your quarterback was a turnover machine, okay? Now you're looking at a team that's depleted and playing a lot of backups and practice squad players. Now you're seeing that you're not really that good of a football team. Okay, so you've got to go back to the drawing board and you got to be able to change some of the things that you do. I mean, I, I read an article this week where, um, you know, Michael Hayes, who was a, who was on Marcus Hayes, I should say, who was on my uh, my podcast last week. He said that, you know, the Eagles shouldn't do anything. They should stand pat. Keep how we keep keep Doug and keep Jim Schwartz. OK, but it still remains to be seen whether that is what you really need to do, because if Doug is not going to change. You know, even if Carson comes back in and he's the starter next year, the same thing is going to happen all over again unless you can remain healthy and you got the type of offensive line that's going to allow him to operate. And then can has will he how will all of this affect his confidence from a defensive perspective? You still, you know, don't know what you're going to look like at, on one corner. You still don't know what you're going to look like at safety because you're not going to get Rodney McLeod back anytime soon. And you're deficient at the linebacker position. So you're going to heap all the pressure back on the defensive line again, and it takes more than four guys on the defensive side of the ball to be proficient, okay? So what type of changes are you going to make to improve this team and improve this roster? Um, and listen, they're going to finish in the basement of the worst division in all of football probably in the last 30 years. That says a lot. And if yeah. you stand pat, then that means that you're okay with standing pat because then, in my opinion, they're not going to come back – next year any better off than they are this year. I agree with all of what you have said uh, yourself and Barrett and Ray at the same time. It's still a crushing loss if you're an Eagles fan. Sure, they're going to get a higher draft pick, and I guess that's all well and good, and we'll discuss it. No, this is not the 1964 Phillies collapse, which saw my friend Ray Dittinger almost flunk out of Temple University. It's not the last game at Veterans Stadium. Thanks when, for bringing that up, Mike. Well, I know, but it's, it's, it's not that bad. Uh, it's not the last game at the vet where they lost to Tampa Bay. It's not Kawhi Leonard making that game seven, and boom, and rolls in. That was the conference semifinals. But it's bad. It it's really Dallas, man. right here. It's Dallas week, man. It's Any Dallas time, yeah. week. Anytime Jalen Mills said it in the pregame yes. show, we know this is a must win regardless of what's on the line with playoffs or anything else. This is a must win game. And they, I mean, that was just, they just stunk it up. It was terrible. We'll get to why. Because they were up 14-3. to It looked like they were going to roll the Dallas Cowboys. And next week was going to set up a game for the right to go right. to the playoffs. The worst thing they could have did was get that long touchdown. See, that's, that's the thing. That, that's, why, that's why this is a real gut punch. Yeah. Because it, this, the way this whole thing started, it felt like one of those games that we talked about in, in one of those Sundays that we talked about in pregame where you need this to happen and you need this to happen and you need this to happen and we're going to get in. And it looks like Washington is losing. Beautiful. You can see, you can see that's happening. It's the Giants, Giants have already lost. And before you can blink, you're up 14-3 to in this game against a bad Dallas team. It looks like, once again, all the stars have aligned. With Deshaun about to get re-signed for five more years by Howie. That exactly was the worst right. thing that could have happened. It's unbelievable. Once and they then the ball it all over just collapsed. All right, yeah. let me take, speaking of collapse, let's take a quick timeout. Doug Peterson will explain <laughs> himself. We'll hear from Jalen Hurts on, a, by the way, he threw for 342 yards. You don't want to know about his passer rating, but he did throw for 342 yards. His arm is now separated from his body, but that's another story. 